this year, our eighth graders are embarking on a new entrepreneurship journey. It's set up kind of like Shark Tank. So they come in and they talk about problems that bug them in the world. And then they will actually get into a company and they will develop a prototype, which is their solution to the problem. They will then pitch their company and their products to a shark team. And once they get funded, they will actually develop the products and sell them at a marketplace here at school. In this class, we have a 3D printer that they have access to. They have a Cricut and we have a lot of sewing machines that they're able to use. So these technology offerings that they have will help them develop their product and bring their product to life. Maker Tools lesson was designed to kind of show students all the different tools they have to use in the FACTS curriculum. We designed this project to kind of show them all the different options they had. And we found that after the lessons, students really knew what they wanted to use to create their products. And they had a much more solid understanding of how to use them. A problem we thought of was whenever we're eating chips, the dust gets all over our fingers. So we made chipper grippers and it just prevents the chip dust from getting on your fingers. And we added the rubber grips on the end so the chip wouldn't like slip out as you're eating it. Our media club has about 30 to 40 students, 6th through 8th grade, and they come once a week and they work on media projects or they're recording segments for our Wildcat TV News broadcast that airs to all students every other Friday during their second period in place of the regular PA announcements. The production lab space was just part of our Learning Commons redesign, so students are free to use use that during study hall or lunch or before or after school. And that's one of the great parts of my job is that I get to work on these projects with the students that they really take an interest in because they want to learn those skills and they're making the time to do that. When students start in media club, they're usually in sixth grade and they're excited and it takes about five takes to get them through their recorded segments. By the time they're eighth grade, they are pros and they are independent and working together as a team to make sure that they can record the segments and get them edited into a show that is broadcast in front of all 600 students here at Washington. I promote digital and connected learning in my kindergarten classroom through the use of Seesaw. Seesaw is a digital portfolio and it allows parents a glimpse into our classroom in live time. It's a great resource for parents to see what their child is learning, how they're doing, and also little snapshots of our day that parents can look at with their children later that night and say, tell me more about this. It really opens lines of communication and creates a partnership between home and school. And parents will have this portfolio forever. It's something that at the end of the year you can download and have as a keepsake for your kindergarten year. I essentially use Seesaw for reading fluency and connecting word study instruction into their reading. When they're reading on Seesaw and recording themselves, they're not only interacting with the text, but they're also able to share what they're working on with their families. Parents are able to see different opportunities for leadership, collaboration, and celebration, and share with their student that, oh, I saw that, or, you know, you did a really good job with this. I think it only builds their confidence because it's not only coming from me. I'm not the only one that's celebrating all the good things that they're doing in the classroom. This year in particular, I've been able to promote technology and digital learning with my English language learner. He came to Prairie this year not knowing any English at all, and so we were given an iPad with a translator app on it. I remember the first day he started at Prairie and the first week he was really withdrawn in the classroom. And then when he was given the translator on the iPad, it changed his entire experience at Prairie. I saw him getting excited to learn. He was communicating with his friends. His friends would bring the translator to lunch and talk with him. Now that he's had the translator for so long, he has the confidence and he has all the tools to help him be successful at Prairie. I run a choice-based classroom and technology is kind of what drives that. What we did for the podcast club, Mr. Kressel and I had actually talked about just finding different ways to help students show what they know and share their learning. We started making a podcast to learn the medium and then after we 
kind of knew what we were doing with audio, we started sharing that with the students and they started publishing their own as an after school activity. There are a lot of skills that come together when you're creating a podcast. You're writing, you're researching. We are talking to students about finding reliable sources of information and then be mindful of what kind of information we're putting out there to share with others, which is a crucial skill to develop today. Even if it's just kids or peers, grandparents, any family members or the community at large, these are available for all of us to take a listen to. And it's those first steps into being responsible digital citizens. They're starting to get a taste of what it's like to be a content creator. We want students to feel like they can practice some of the skills they're learning in class in a way that makes them feel empowered to try new things, find their passions and go further than just what we're showing them right here in the classroom. Kids are no longer just recipients of information. They work best when they are presented with a problem or a challenge, possibly even a real world challenge like this conservation unit. This particular project is a public service announcement. The reason that I have them make a video is it's kind of a culmination of what they've learned throughout the year. They meet all the standards of being able to read multiple sources and to synthesize that information. And through critical thinking, they have to evaluate it and see what makes sense to them. And then they have to form their own recommendation. You would have to search up like something specific and we had to figure out which ones were a credible website. If we didn't have those resources, then the facts in our video could be fake and it wouldn't teach anybody about anything. Then at the end of our video, we had a page where we wrote all of the sources we use. Even one person can persuade a couple people and all of those people can persuade more and can just keep getting bigger and bigger until it's big enough to stop that problem. If they can make a call to action, if they can come up with through critical thinking and through their reasoning skills, put together ideas that they believe will solve a problem to make them change makers, that's what you're in it for, to see that growth.